Hi friends, welcome back. Uh, so today we're gonna do something a little bit different. So grab your adult beverage if you so choose. I'll be drinking whiskey. And we're gonna go through the top 10. So today we're gonna cover 10, nine, and eight, my top 10 favorite PlayStation 1 games. So these are games, this list is just my personal opinion. These are games that have shaped me into the gamer that I am today. And like, they're just, they have feel good memories attached to them too. Kind of the warm and fuzzies. So let's dive right on in. All right, so number 10, Breath of Fire 3. This game, like I haven't, I completely spaced it until a few days ago and I was like, what the fuck? I remember that game. So Breath of Fire 3 came out in 1997, I believe. I don't think I picked it up until like early 2000, so several years after it had been released. And it was on summer and there's a whole story attached to it. I'm gonna go into it as we go. So Breath of Fire 3 was just such a cool concept for a game when I was game, when I first started my gaming. So you have your humans, and then you have humans with a specific gene called the brood gene. And the brood gene allowed these humans to transform into freaking dragons. They transform into dragons. And like, that's what six year old Sammy wanted to be when she, when she grew up. Like she wanted to be a human that turned into a dragon. I mean, I still kind of do but I also realistically understand science is not there yet. Keyword yet. Keyword being yet. Okay, so this game had such fun characters and such a, this game had such a beautiful environment and ugh, such fun characters to, to, as your companions as well. But like, I played this game when I was younger, so I didn't really dive deep into the story when I first started playing it, which I think is kind of the beauty of it. Um, I would run around the town and, and kind of LARP inside the game, which I feel you judging me. Kind of just being able to like, so-and-so was my best friend and I was married to this person and like, I go into different towns, like, because like, the first town I don't believe is too far after the first town and so just kind of like LARP in between those two areas. And I don't like, I remember, distinctly remember playing this game at my cousin's house and I don't know if it was one of those games that he rented or if it was a game that a friend had let him borrow, but I, I just, I had so much fun with it. And it was just, it's just such a wholesome game. And I really wish they'd remake it so that way the new gamers can really understand like the classics. Oh, it's just, it's such a good game, guys. It is just such a good game. All right, so that's gonna bring us to number nine. So number nine, kind of a way off the path of the game we just talked about. It's a fighting game. Came out in 1993. And it is so it's fucking perfect. No light reflection. Yeah. Go Sam. This video is going to be good. Awesome for the thumbnail. So this game, <laughs> it brings back some memories. I'm like, look, I even still have the disc and look at this hunk, that hunk. This game brings back memories. And once again, I was playing at my cousin's house. I don't know if you're noticing a pattern of who got me into gaming, but my cousin did. And I can't thank him enough, and I don't think he realizes what he did. So Soul Blade was one of those games that, like, I played it very young. And I know my sister handed me, or my cousin, one of the two, handed me an unplugged controller. Now I gave no, no bothers. Like, no bothers given. I was just happy that I got to see these characters. And so Soul Blade is very unique in the fighting game in the sense of... It was one of the first character progression stories that I actually was a part of, that I actually saw start to finish. Cause it's a very short game. Another drink, shall we? Ah, mm. I fucking love whiskey and I don't know why. Uh, so, Soul Blade was one of those games that I very early on saw character progression and I love story and story is character progression. So I would choose a character named Taki, primarily. So I loved Taki and I thought she was this badass fucking beast. And I mean, she was, I wasn't wrong, but like, she was also beautiful. Like she had, I mean, she's also hot as fuck. Like she has big ass fucking titties, um, just jammed into this suit, <laughs> this green or pink suit. And I get it, she was there for sex appeal. But at the same time, 
she was this badass like no man could beat her depending on like the scenario like when you're playing as her like you had to fight yourself which i thought was kind of weird at the time but like i'll take it uh it was just it, it wasn't the story that grabbed me by any sense of the imagination but kind of building these characters and building their stories and being able to beat the game super quick and then jump into another one and like sophie or sophia i really i still like sophia to this day i think she's a badass character she's a badass woman in gaming but like that move where she would jump on her the bat on the on the guy or on the person that she was fighting and it clits their head between her thighs and go like that's a way to go I take it. I mean, I wouldn't because she's not my type, but like, if I did that to my husband, he would not be bad. I'm just saying. And it's just, there's those cool moves and those specific character traits in those moves that set them apart. And I'm not doing any this game any justice by explaining it. I'm really not. And it was an arcade game back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. I'm getting a little Lenny Kenny on you guys. I'm working on back up. It was an arcade game back in the day. That being said, I do love it. I still have the physical copy, as you can tell. Black label and all. Uh, <laughs> I just, not enough words can express, like, how happy I was as a kid in my cousin's bedroom with my sister playing these games and just not a care. Which leads me in, oh, 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 which leads me in to number eight. Number eight. We're gonna go. This one kind of ties closer into like, oh, that makes sense from nine to nine, nine to eight. Uh, it's gonna be Legend of Legaia. So Legend of Legaia is such. Once again, it was one of those games that I larped that I that I larped in because I played it at such a young age, but it was actually really cool. So as I, as I went back and played it as I got older, like 10 and 11 is when I really got into it on the PS3, no, when did that? PS2, I think, because I had the PS2 at the time too, but that's a whole different list that we're gonna go into. So Legend of Gaia was just a really cool concept at the time. I mean, between the mist, which used to be an original concept and actually really, it still is a really cool concept. You had mist that you had to fight, trees that you had to restore, we're gonna take another drink of adult beverage. And the characters, like I, I cannot stress this enough. I love character progression. And I think the character progression in this in this game was unique in the sense of like, we saw the characters grow individually as well together and back in the PS1 days, that wasn't really a thing like you didn't see them grow in dialogue it was kind of like oh, i've grown and i'm still i don't i don't know where i was going with that but huh. but the thing that stands out most to me in this game and i think it's something that we really need to take to to, to really appreciate about these old games is the unique combat combat system this game had a unique combat system and it's not just in the sense of like it's a hack and slash because but it had unique combos and i'm terrible at combo games like that's why i stay away from them but this game not only made it fun but i could get past that aspect of it but i still enjoyed my time with it because it wasn't all about the combat it wasn't all combat heavy it was very story driven as far as the characters and the environment and i don't know i think that's unique i think it's what a lot of games nowadays are missing so, that being said, those are my 10, 9, and 8 favorite PS1 games of all time. Once again, this list is entirely my own opinion, and I want to say thank you guys for joining in. I really appreciate it, and I love having, I love making these videos for you. Uh, if you, if any of these games are on your list, of, it, of, even if you've played them, like, comment below, let's bond, let's become best friends over old games! It's my favorite! So. Thanks for being weird with me. Thanks for watching. And once again, comment down below and I hope to see you guys again. All right, have a great day. Bye.